Hello everyone. Today we're going to be doing Dark Vader's uh, Tie Advanced one today. Um, this one is actually one I have done for the Club Rising class, so I won't actually be doing this one um, straight up. I do have a few techniques that I tried uh, to make it as symmetrical as possible. Learning that symmetrical is the same on each side. That doesn't mean the shading is the same on each side, but the shape is the same uh, if you want to cut it down the middle. So we are going to look at this, um, this advanced TIE fighter. The difference between this and a regular TIE fighter is the curved wing. Well, there's lots of differences, but the main visual differences are the wings that are curved in causing it to have more aerodynamicity, making it faster. But also the cockpit is bigger, allowing for um, larger people to sit on it, larger people being Darth Vader, who was much larger than your average um, average officer due to his speed, but also due to person who was active. <laughs> so let me go ahead and pull that up. All right, sharing my screen so you guys can see. Okay, so here we have um, some modern version of the tie advance. So the first thing I want you to notice is this white box all around this. Do you see how the picture is nice, clean, rectangle? So this picture that has lots of angles, lots of circular pieces is actually built inside a nice clean rectangle. So if you were to take this side, just measuring the ratios here, this side is roughly, oh, I'm gonna do it again. Roughly, let's see, three and a half, roughly three point five inches. And then up here, you've got almost six. So, all these centimeters for those who are on the metric system. So, the first one's about 14 centimeters. We'll do 14 centimeters and the three and a half inches is eight and a half centimeters. So it's not exactly half. Eight. Okay. So what we have here is this isn't exactly half, but it's a bit fatter this one. So if I were to do that on my paper, it would be pretty small. So let me exit out. Wait, hold on. before I do that, sorry. I wanted to go and find out what the center point of this piece is. So if I drew an X down center, we assume that the center is going to be the eye of the cockpit, but I just want to see. I think it would be because you can see that my rectangle drawing is a little off. So I would say the dead center of this cockpit here is in fact the center. So I just wanted to make sure of that. And most of our pieces here are pointing towards that center. Okay, so let's go ahead and make that. All right. Turn this on. Okay, so this is the one that I did. The box that I originally drew for this one was. Um, exactly what it was on there, 14 by eight and a half. So if you want to, 
we can go and do that. You can add an inch or two if it's easier for you. You can make it bigger, you can make it smaller. I would suggest to go bigger if you want to because it is easier, especially when you're first learning to draw or if you've not drawn something like this before to go bigger. Okay. I actually might go a tad bigger on this as well. Quite worn down from the shading of Luke's X Wing the other day. And I'm going to add two more centimeters. And then I'm going to come down eight and a half. Eight and a half. And two more centimeters. So I'm making it ten and a half. Coming down on this side. And then coming across, and if it's not exactly at 16, I can pull it in. You just want a nice rectangle here, which obviously mine is not perfectly straight. <laughs> Let me measure here. Guys, it's a problem. <laughs> I should have done this the first time. I mean, it's a problem where I feel like things have to be perfectly straight. That's okay. I am sure there are people out there like me. The funny thing is, the first time you drew this, I just eyed the rectangle. <laughs> it turned out pretty good. Then when I record it, I don't trust myself. So there you go. You're welcome. Even artists who've been at this for a while. And hang ups. All right, there we go. Now we've got our 16. Okay. So here's my rectangle. So uh, what I want to do from here is very lightly, which it does look like you guys know your way around how to use a pencil from what I can see from your last posts. So you know how to draw lightly. So I'm gonna draw a box here with our X, okay? And then a line down the middle. Make sure I have my ruler lined up there. Okay, we have our nice little map here. I might actually also go ahead and make this. Now it's starting to look like origami. Okay, so we have our nice grid here, our triangle grid, similar to what we used on uh, Luke's X Wing. I have my eraser ready. <laughs> Always good to have that ready. And my pencil sharpener when the time comes. So let's go ahead and get. The basic drawing of this done, and just like last time, we move on to the shading in the next class. So, first off, I'm going to draw the circles in the middle. So, knowing that the cockpit is right in the middle of this background here. You guys have had my classes before. You know how to draw a circle. If you have not, start not touching the page, just making a circle. Slowly bring your pencil down and just circle lightly until you get the shape you want, and then you can draw it in. Don't try to freehand the circle, try 
as you are just the circle master. I've heard it said that only insane people can draw a perfect circle. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's necessarily true, but I'm also, you know, some people would say they're insane, but <laughs> and nowadays that means something a little different than what it used to, but I don't even know what it used to mean, so <laughs> that's great. All right, so I have my first circle. I'm not drawing the inner lines or details or anything. I'm just trying to get proportions at this point. So looking at this, and if you guys want to, you can also print off the picture. I made it available, the reference picture, that, so that you guys can draw on it. Sometimes that is helpful. So I've got some space between here and here, and it is the same space. So what I'm going to do, it's not, it's probably a little bit more than the other one, but I'm going to make these little ruler lines. <laughs> I'm sure you guys just love my ruler lines. Draw some ruler lines here. So I can make sure when I'm drawing my circle to try to stay within those lines. All right, so here we go, For a bigger circle. Usually putting the pencil down the first time is the worst, but so that's why I gradually do it. You can even do it slower. And again, bigger circles are difficult. So just take your time, try to get that movement and there's gonna be all kinds of stuff happening, okay? Obviously right now, the circle looks super wonky. So, but now I have a guide to go along that outer edge. Come down and I've done these lines. You can do it like this in the first place if you want to. Just making sure that you get a circle. And I think that mine might be a little wonky because my ruler points on the left and right are a little too far out. There are some things that I don't like to measure, which I probably should. But learning how to freehand is also good too. So. But making a good ruler it's a good way to learn how to play hand. Because eventually you begin to make those rulers in your mind instead of on the paper. All right, so I think that's a pretty good circle. What I'm gonna do from here is I can go ahead and erase this haze, which is what it's looking like right now. This haze of the... <laughs> circle creation. I want to keep my ruler lines as much as possible um, for the triangles because that's going to help me with the wings. Some people find angles more difficult. Some people find circles more difficult. Honestly, I think it's just what you practice the most. So the more you practice circles, the better you'll get at making circles, angles, all of that is the same. Okay, now this is also not very dark, okay? I'm keeping it darker for you so you can see. And I have a fancy pencil that erases really well. But even then, um, keep it light where you can see it, but not so crazy that. Um, there, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so what I wanna do now is we're not gonna make the curves just yet, but I know that my wings are gonna come out to here. So there is one more circle inside of this. Um, and actually the funny thing is, 
that circle is actually a little lower than this. It's not dead in the center of this. Let me show you. Well, I don't believe it is, but it might be. It just doesn't look like it. Let's see. Oh, it's centimeters. Centimeters is easier just because there's more lines. So six. Okay. All right, so down the center of this, if it's six inches, the center. All right, never mind. It wasn't. It doesn't look like it's exactly in the center, but I think that's because there's it's lighter up here than it is down here, and there's more space up here. So we'll just keep this as it is for now. I would say our bottom part needs to be we're going about bottom half, bottom thirds of the circle here. So that's called the root of thirds. Things, um, a lot of things in our world are symmetrically broken down into one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay. So that's another thing we can do is break this box into thirds. I'm not going to do that because I think that is just something we don't need to do. I am going to eye it though and break the circle into thirds. That way I can get my line here. Here we go. It's about right. Look at that. Sweet. I'm going to go to the other side. Now again, these drawings aren't just showing me how perfect I can do this. I want you guys to see my mistakes. I want you guys to watch what I do and say, hmm, that could be done an easier way. Hey, if this can be done an easier way and you found it easier than you think you can do it, please share in the comments. I mean, that would be awesome. We're all in this together and we're learning these things together. Some of us just might have more experience than others. Um, I don't have a lot of experience drawing pie fighters, to be honest, or other stolen vehicles. So this is always a fun thing. All right, so I have my lines for these pieces. I'm going to chop these nice triangles here. Again, going very lightly. Say on the page that I'm not symmetrical. So my triangles here I try to make them as easy as possible though my, my lines aren't perfect, so but it's still going to look awesome. I have to tell myself that a lot, even if your lines are not in the perfect spot. It's still going to look awesome. Okay, so here we go. Nice. I'm gonna go ahead and start on this first wing here. So let me see what angle this is coming at. So this wing is coming at an angle towards the top here. This one should be the same. So our top part is our foreshortening that we talked about the other day. Where it's coming down. This is just a ruler so I can try to get them the same. Okay. I'm showing this to you so you can see. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to draw that part along that line. And then this one doesn't have to be so fancy. Okay, bringing those down. All right, so now that I have that angle, I also need to remember to erase my lines if I go. 
would be helpful. So then there will be a lot less lines. It's really nice to do. Okay, so I brought those down. Do the bottom part here, which is gonna be in the same spot, just in the bottom area. So, a little. Coming up and on just there. Drawing them in. Okay. And erasing. I really do not do this every six years. Like I said, there are some things that your brain will learn to do on its own and make shortcuts. I want you to see my process in this drawing, okay? So that you guys can learn to make these same processes. Just from looking at this, I think it's looking to be this one's actually a little too big. A little too wide. I picked this specifically to be straight on. I <laughs> wanted to give you guys a rest from the last one that we did, but also um, to show you that a straight on. So in theory, this is supposed to be the same on this side as it is on this side. So let's move on to the next part. So our midline is meeting right here, and this line is meeting right here. So. We won't worry about that now. What we need to do now is this guy is coming in towards the middle. Okay, that is something I can say. So he is coming in towards the middle. Okay, and it's going to do that the same thing on the other side. There, see that? I'm gonna go ahead and do it over here. Coming in towards the middle. This one. Coming in towards the middle. That gets this angle correct. So I'm gonna draw this piece in. I know I can connect these wings there. And I know I can connect this wing there. Same over here. This way. This way. So those are connected, which means that I can draw a straight line down like this. Okay, so I have wings, I have circles, and I have so many lines. <laughs> Let's erase some lines. The lines I just drew towards the middle are going away. You guys may not be choosing to draw these lines. So just bear with me while I erase these. We're almost done. Hang in there for 15 more minutes and we'll have this part completed. Wings. I'm also going to erase um, some of the pieces inside the wings here. They no longer need diagonal lines at the top. I want to keep the plus cross section, but um, I'm going to erase some of these. Okay. 
So on the piece connecting these wings, we already have the connector points here because of our, our thirds of this. So I'm going to go ahead and bring those into the center here. So if I were to cut this in half, and actually these do have a cut down the middle, which is gonna help with shading. So just the middle of this line, down to the middle of that line, the middle of this, up to that. So we know that this is going to connect right here. So bringing that, bringing those together there. Side. Do the middle first. Middle, middle, middle. Okay. And connection. Now we're not necessarily doing the middle dot. We do have to do like a ice cream cone shape here because it can't connect on a dime. It needs to connect on a dime. <laughs> So, got a bigger connection here. Okay. And bye bye lines there. Okay. This is looking hot and awesome already. All right. As you can see, the difference between two tie fires with the center being much larger uh, than the other two is apparent. It is much larger. So let's go ahead and do the rings on the inside. We're going to finish erasing, and that will be it for, for this. And then we will add the details in the next video. So we have our middle circle. <laughs> we have our middle circle here. Before I do that, let me put a little top on this. That fix the slide and make it look pretty in here. Sticking up on the top. All right. So coming down, our circle is going to start approximately about right here. Like before, I'm going to eye this. I'm paying attention to the distance from here to here and here to here. And you can draw a line if it's helpful for you. But I'm drawing that line in my mind. I'm not making the circle like I usually do. I could, but I can't. It looks a little squat, so I'm going to add more at the top. And then coming down more. And this eye shape. Now, as I do that, the circle in the middle changes. And I don't want to redraw. <laughs> I'm just going to redraw a 
draw in the center of my circle here. And the reason it doesn't fit perfectly is because my measurements aren't perfect. Okay, with that. So then I'm going to redraw my circle here in the middle. So that is in place with the other one. Okay. Let's make these last 10 minutes count. I am going to make this pretty. So we have rings within rings within rings. So my first ring, the reason I'm cleaning this up is because it's a lot easier to erase now than later. But what I'm doing now is making the rings within the rings. This line, so it's not so bold. Okay, so we have our. I am just not doing well with the circles today. Anybody else? <laughs> okay. So then there's, I'm going to try to keep the width of these rings similar. I have to turn my page a little bit more helpful. If it's not a perfect circle yet, don't worry about that. Some things can be fixed in the shading process. So, all right, so there's my ring within a ring there. That looks like it's too dark. Okay, so then we've got. Spires for the wheel here. So erasing the lines, or I can barely see them because I know it is difficult to erase these little lines <laughs> they are in the middle of these little tiny spires. So making sure we are still symmetrical all the way around. All right. Move this little square of the tab or rectangle up a little bit. Okay. And then I'm going to clean up the outside here. Because we want to get it ready for shading. So now is the cleanup time. So I'm going to go along and darken some lines. Still not going to make them super dark because that will happen during the shading process. One thing I do want to do before we move forward is right here, we have our center line, remember, which I erased. <laughs> that is going to be these actually kind of curve in towards that center line. That it's not a it's not a straight line. 
So the knees curve in, that's how they hook onto the sofa. Okay, I have dots that I drew for you. Erase those. Okay. This looks weird right now. Again, because it's not shaded. But once it is shaded, you guys will understand exactly what I was going through. A lot of fuzzy lines because my hands are sticking right across the page. All right, so cleaning up here, erasing some rulers. You can even erase the rectangle along the outside because the drawing part is done. Shading does not really require that line. Use my big eraser for this. I've erased my precision eraser. Comes with my pencil. Even regular pencils, it's good to get an external eraser and use your precision eraser for smaller areas as you're going. But most of these erasers have nice points, so they're much better. So we may end up drawing some of these back in, but it would be on a neat new basis while we shade. But honestly, I'm pretty sure you guys can from here. And if you're a perfectionist like me, winging it every now and then is a good thing. So we have our drawing. So next class, we're going to add more details and shape this back. Have a great day.